Is it really worth it to go through the trouble to get your professional engineering or PE license? People always say you should get your license. Why? Well, in this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam, we're gonna ask a practicing licensed engineer, Justin Edenbaum. Justin has experienced many benefits from having his PE license over the years, some of which you may not have even thought of. Before I do that though, let me remind you that most successful engineers will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced, whether it was due to a promotion, a salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You wanna get your PE license. However, preparing for that PE exam can be a real challenge. But through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything that you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. All right, now it's time to meet this licensed professional engineer, Justin Edenbaum. Justin, welcome to Pass the PE Exam. Thanks for taking a few minutes. No, my pleasure, Anthony. All right, so Justin, just to start off, can you briefly introduce yourself to our viewers and let them know kind of what type of engineering you do on a regular basis? Sure. So my name is Justin Edenbaum, and I own my own engineering firm called Never Gray. And I'm a mechanical engineer, and I have a professional engineering license in New York, Nevada, and the province of Ontario in Canada. Uh, as I said, I'm a mechanical engineer, and my firm specializes in tunnel ventilation and underground fire life safety. That's great, Justin. And I know that one of the benefits for you in getting your PE license was that you were able to secure a new client that you might not have been able to get without that license. Can you share that story? Sure. So there was actually a client I was pursuing. They're, they're based in California, but the project was in Nevada. And as time was going on, eventually they had the need to have a professional engineer in the state of Nevada. So I already had my professional engineering license in New York State. I had my NCEES record and I said, this is something I can get. And I went, I have a Nevada license and my firm is now registered to provide engineering services in Nevada. And I was able to secure a client that I was chasing for a while. Flexibility, just because you had the license and that ability, that, that's, yes. that's awesome. All right, so that brings me to my next question, which you kind of referenced there. Can having a professional engineering license in one state make it easier to get it in another state? It is a two-step process. The answer, yes, it is. But so if you get it in one state, it is easier to get it in another state with the second step being you want to register your record with NCEES. And um, I say that because you want to look at those requirements, especially early on, once you get your PE, because you need to document all your experience in that. And so that step eventually starts making the paperwork much, much easier. That's great. And, and we are going to have some videos coming up on how to document your experience with the application process, but I've heard very good things about the NCEES record. I've heard that it's, you know, it can be a lot of work to get it, but once you have it, it really makes it easier to kind of transfer the license and get licensed. <laughs> Those videos are important because I was, my mentor wanted to go out and get his NCEES record after 40 years in the industry. And I think I was one of the interns who had to sit there and try and document everything he did. And it's something you want to do yourself and start almost from the beginning of your career in some type of log. So I'll look at that video to see what, what we should have done back then. <laughs> All right, Justin, let's talk about another benefit of having the PE license, which is starting your own business. That's something that you did. Talk about how having a PE license can help someone in getting their business going. In certain states and in the province of Ontario, you cannot offer engineering services unless you are a professional engineer. Um, now, you could not, sorry, you can't start a company or have a company and make money unless you are a professional engineer. So let's say, um, Anthony, you had a tunnel and it needed ventilation and you knew Justin could do it. I would not be able to offer you that service and let you pay me unless I was a professional engineer and the firm was registered. And if I didn't have that PE, I, I couldn't do that. So it is vitally important if you're gonna start your own firm that offers engineering services. Um, and the requirement for it probably varies state to state. I'm not familiar with all 50, but uh, certainly in Nevada, that was part of the, how I got my project, which is I need the, someone at the company needed a PE and then your company had to get registered. 
Yeah, it's a, it's really important, and I and I practiced my engineering in New York, and it was also required in New York that if you wanted to be an owner, you had to have your license. And in some states, I know that there, you know, you may not have to have it, but again, like you know, it's just flexibility. I mean, you, if you go to another, what if you go to another state? What if you want to extend your business? Um, it's really really important, and I know a lot of engineers that contact us through our videos and through our podcasts want to start their own engineering companies in the future. So that being said, get your PE license for that. That's very, very, very important. And it's important for the entrepreneur, and it's also for important for someone who who who's. It's also important for the career. So let's talk about authority. You know, your reputation, your credibility. Talk about how having a PE license contributes to that. You have to read the ethics. On, on many states have the ethics code and it really drills home. And it's some things you learn in university, but your ultimate, res- your ultimate responsibility is the safety of the public. And when you, when you start getting into matches with people and you start saying, is this safe enough? Is this safe enough? And I, I currently have a client right now who um, is starting to question certain things that were done. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm advising a client in this one and I say, we're willing to put our PE stamp on this, that this is safe enough. We hear your concerns. We feel that the level of safety you're asking for is higher, but we are professional engineers and we are giving the minimum standard that we believe is acceptable. If you want more, we can give you more, but we're, we're ready to put our PN stamp. And that's authority that you get to say when you're a professional engineer, because you know the ethics involved and you also know that your, you know, your license is on the line and your, um, your career and your livelihood. So it, it means something as far as your authority. It means a lot, and I always I like to use the quote from the uh, from the Spider Man movies: "With great power comes great responsibility," and it's it's totally applicable to being a professional engineer because, you know, when we're younger and we pass that PE exam, we're so excited, we show everyone that we passed, but we don't realize what what that means in terms of responsibility. And if you sign and seal a drawing, you are putting your livelihood basically on the line, and so. That's something that, you know, I'm glad that you you talk about that, Justin, because I think when a lot of these FE and PE, you know, review videos, they're focused a lot on the mechanics of the exam. But what you don't have to remember is that as soon as you get that passing grade, you're on like a whole nother level. Yeah, oh, yeah there you are. And uh, that client in Nevada, eventually I had to write a letter and stamp it. And um, there were some edits that were going on. And at some point I'm like, no, this is what it's going to say because it's my stamp. And, and, and there's an authority that comes with that and a, and a responsibility as well, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. And so last but certainly not least in terms of the benefits associated with a license, talk to us about how having a PE license can impact your your salary, the amount of money that you make and the way that you progress. <laughs> I see you pointing up, up, up. It's going up. Um, so in my industry, in the infrastructure industry, consulting, Unfortunately, in the industry, for, for better or worse, at some point, you kind of know what everyone makes because we bill out our hours. And I will tell you that it is known in our industry that you're going to get a bump once you get your PE. And if you do not get a bump with your current employer, someone else is going to pay you more money. And I don't remember what the standard amount was back when I got mine, but uh, probably with inflation, you're looking at $7,500 or some percentage of your salary that you are owed just because you passed your PE. Now it's money due to you because of, of, of the hard work you've done, but now you've got the certification um, and outside accreditation. And so um, as far as it increases the amount of money you can make and it, it can be significant. Yeah, not only will it increase your salary per se, but it can increase the progression in your company, You know how quickly you can climb that ladder. Uh-huh. And talk a little bit about, you have a story that I know about, you know, the gentleman who was older and he, he was trying to get his license to make that happen. Maybe you could talk about that. All right. So there was an individual at the company I used to work for, um, and he was 60 years old and he was rising his way up through the ranks and, and he was a, a good engineer, but he could go no further or he couldn't get the, the big clients unless he had his professional engineer. And there he was at the age of 60, taking his FE exam. And it was extremely painful for him to do. I mean, you're coming from a guy who might never have taken a multiple choice test. Uh, So like, it it was definitely a a world changer for him. But that's sort of a regret decision maybe on his part, 
let's talk about at the beginning of the career. You cannot become partner in certain places. You cannot rise amongst the rank. And like, what you, let's go back to what we talked about before, your authority and your accreditation. Without it, you're a great draftsman, but you're not going any farther than that in certain companies. And so um, in, in the infrastructure world, and in certain in many areas where there are drawings where they're stamped and sealed, you're not going anywhere without your PE. And maybe you're gonna be great and maybe you've got all these other great skills, Good, you could be in charge of marketing, but you're never gonna be the guy who's in charge of all the engineers because you don't have the PE. It's almost, it's gotten to the point in the industry or and it could be industry dependent, but it's gotten to the point where it's a, it's a must have, not a nice to have. Justin, any last points that you'd like to share with our viewers around just the PE license, your experience as a PE before we let you go? So if you're considering getting a PE I'm going to go back to the FE exam. I took my FE exam two years after uh, university and I needed a break after university. I did, I worked hard in university. When I came out, I was done. But the process of studying for your FE and the process of studying for your PE can really re-engage you in that education and those core concepts. So actually after taking my PE, my F, studying for my FE exam, I said, you know what? I'm ready to go back to school. And I actually went back and got my master's. So yes, we just talked about the career, the accreditation, the authority and, uh, you know, uh, and helping society and things like that. But it also, you know, uh, your EMI is all about um, engineering Man management Institute is all about self-improvement. And that was what one of the things that kickstarted me back to remember how important knowledge was. So if you don't have your PE and you've got to take that first step of, of getting the FE or anything like that, only good's going to come out of it. It's going to take some time and effort, but it's not just the accreditation. There's other uh, altruistic um, properties that come out of it. So that's my last word. It's bigger than just the money and the career. It's also the knowledge that you get working for that process. That's great. I, I really like that because I think a lot of times the mindset of a working engineer who has to go and take the PE exam can be one that's, now I got to study, I'm tired at night, I'm not motivated to do this. And I think, Justin, your approach is a good one in that you can think about it, not just about all the benefits that you and I talked about in terms of salary and all that, but, you know, this is also going to force me to be technically re-engaged, technically sharp, and making sure that I'm staying up on guidelines. Because ultimately at EMI, we do help engineers become better managers and leaders. And sometimes the best managers are the ones that have a good technical background and understanding before they take that next step. Yeah, a good technical, uh, if you're going to lead people that are in other disciplines, uh, so I'm highly specialized. Uh, it's, kind, it's kind of a little bit off topic, but if you know your subject well, mechanical engineering, if I have to manage a civil, a structural, or anyone else, because I know what level of depth I need to go into for mine and sort of all the background and professional engineering things that I've learned, it also makes sure I ask the right questions of my professional structural engineers and professional civil engineers. So going technical still definitely helps you in your engineering career. And this is just another way to do it. Well, Justin Edenbaum, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Pass the PE Exam. Your, your advice is really invaluable. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. There you have it. Right from a licensed professional engineer, your PE license can provide you with instant credibility to help you land a job, flexibility to help you more easily get licensed in other states, opportunity, which might include the ability to start your own engineering business, authority and confidence, which can expedite your career growth, and last but not least, monetary benefits in the way of salary increases and bonuses. So while studying for the PE exam takes time, effort, and a lot of energy, it may very well be worth it many times over. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Pass the PE Exam. Next week, I'm going to cover what experience is required to get accepted to sit for the PE exam. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so be sure to click the subscribe button so that you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video, and I will respond to them in future videos. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. 
I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.